needs before we start. So this is just a Milwaukee multimeter. You may get another multimeter, but all the multimeters work roughly the same. So what we do with our multimeter, we're going to set it to ohms, and that's going to use the ohm scale. Now we need to test all of our gear before we start. So the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is just to test one of your leads to make sure we have the proper continuity. So with our multimeters, you notice at the bottom there is actually three terminals. Now, to, if you need to look for a terminal which has the ohm symbol or omega symbol and the com, com just means common to other terminals. So to test our lead, we're going to put one lead into the com terminal and we're going to put it into the ohm terminal and we should read a value of zero ohms, demonstrating that we have a short circuit or a closed circuit for this cable. This cable is good to use, so when you're using your cables, we know that that cable is fine. Let's just test another cable. We're going to test another a white cable. Again, we test all of our equipment before we do our skills assessments and practicals. So into the COM terminal, into the ohms, and we should read zero ohms. Now I'm just going to take this one out just to show you, just in case. If you had an OL, and this one here, the meter reads OL to indicate an open circuit. So if you actually tested a lead like that and got an OL, you know you have a problem. Or if you've got a high resistance, you know the cable is no good, you take it back to the teacher and ask for another lead. Now that we know that those two leads are fine, we'll, we'll test one more, a black lead, because we're going to use black and red. Do this, so we'll pick up a minute. Okay, the com, just go into the volts and ohms, and we've got a reading of zero ohms. We know that, that this lead is fine as well. So we're going to use the black and red lead is what you would get with a common multimeter. I'm going to use the black in the common terminal and we're going to use the red in the ohm terminal. And what we're going to do now, we're going to test our different, different um, items that you're going to use at the skills assessment. You're going to be using a switch through your, through your practicals so we're going to test the switch here. Now a switch is just either open or closed. So really what a switch is doing is just like these two cables here. I touch them together, we get a reading, and I open it up again, it becomes an open circuit. So if you notice on here, we've actually got three terminals. So to determine how this switch actually works, plug one lead into one of the terminals and plug into the other terminal. Now when we have the switch in one position there, it says it's zero ohms. If we now flick the switch, it should say OL, which means an open circuit. So we know that those two terminals work. If we now just move one of those cables out and do the test again, we're now reading zero ohms. Flick the switch, we've got OL. Now if I put the two leads on this other side here, we get OL and we get OL. So that's how we test our switch. The switch needs to be either zero or OL, which means open circuit. You're going to get a fuse to use in your skills assessment. Now, a fuse is just a, it should be like a closed connection. So what we need to do now with our fuse is to join the top, join the bottom, and if the fuse is good, we should read zero ohms, which means that we have a closed circuit or a short circuit. Now this is an ammeter. Now to test an ammeter, it's very common for these ammeters to blow fuses internally. Now an ammeter has a low resistance, if you remember from your readings. So to test the ammeter, we're going to put one cable into the common terminal. Now the common terminal means it is common to the other red terminals. So we're always going to have to use the common terminal when we use the ammeter. Now we've got four different scales here. We have a one, which says one amp. We have a 500 milliamps, a 100 milliamps, a 50 milliamps. What we're going to do now is I'm going to put the lead of the multimeter into the 50 milliamp range to make sure that this ammeter is okay. And it is reading 4.9 ohms, which is telling us now straight away that it is okay. If I now just move it to the 100 milliamp scale, it's telling us we have 2.4 ohms. Now I'm just going to show you a common problem we have with the ammeters. 
Sometimes people put the amp, well, we put the amp meters in series in the circuit. Now what happens sometimes by accident, people put them in parallel. By putting them in, in parallel, we can actually create, yeah, because it has a low resistance, it actually blows the fuse. So at the side of these amp meters here is a fuse cartridge, so I'm just going to wind it out here. If you just notice the meter there, it's now gone to OL. So if you've actually tested the amp meter and you read OL, we know that internally the fuse is gone. And I'll just continue just to wind that out to show you how that actually works. So it just has a small glass fuse with a cartridge there, and there's our fuse like that. Easy to replace and easy to put in. Once we replace the fuse, or if you get your teacher to do that for you, once we... If you notice the multimeter now, is reading a value of 2.3. So we know that that ammeter is okay. So if you're do, doing hooked up your circuit and you know nothing's working, have you test the ammeter. You need to test all of your equipment before you start. And that's how we test the ammeter. With the ammeter, there'll be a cable going into it and another cable going out of it. We need to break the circuit. Now the cable going in should be the same colour as going out. Normally we put the ammeter after the switch. So we'll have a cable, so we're using a switch wire. A white cable will go into the positive terminal, so current flows from the positive into the ammeter, and then it'll flow out of the common terminal out to the rest of the circuit. So just make it, keep in mind, current flows in through the red and out through the black. It's not positive and negative as in measuring voltage, it's just the way the current flows through this meter. Now when we do connect up this meter, here at the moment it's on the 50 milliamp range. Now with the 50 milliamp range, you're reading the, the scale in the middle, which goes 0, 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50, which means each one of those divisions is 1 milliamp. So each little tiny division is 1 milliamp. If we now pop this out and put it into the next range, which is 100 milliamps, and that is the, the second one up, we're now reading 0, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100 milliamps which means every one of those divisions will be 2 milliamps. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Now if we take the cable out, again we're moving the red cable, we never move the black cable, we go to the 500 milliamp scale. We're now reading the very, very top scale. Now the top scale, 0, 100, 200, 400, 500, which means each one of those divisions will be 10 milliamps, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So we need to make sure when we're reading this, when we've actually got this connected, whichever the terminal we use on here, we read the right scale and work out how the divisions actually work. And finally, on the 1 amp scale, which is the largest scale, and with an ammeter, we always start at the highest scale first and work our way back if we're not too sure of what current will be flowing through the circuit. Otherwise, we can blow the ammeter and we'll have the fuse blown. So with the 1 amp, we're actually reading the lowest scale, which is 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So, so 0, 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, which is 0, 200 milliamps, 400 milliamps, 600, 800, 1000 milliamps. So if we're reading on the bottom scale, we're reading on the 1 amp scale. We're going from 0 to 1 amp. So it goes 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, which means that the 0.2 means 200 milliamps. So each one of those divisions then, halfway will be 100 milliamps, so each one of those divisions will be 20 milliamps. So it will be 20, 40, 50, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, and then 120, 140, 160, 180, 200 milliamps. So make sure when you actually connect this up, we always go the higher scale first, and whatever scale you're on, work out what each one of those little divisions actually equal to. With the voltmeters, the voltmeters have the same thing. Now, now these are just uh, training meters that we're using at, at, the, at the skills assessment. Not something that you use out in the field, but they're just training, training meters. So if you notice here as well, we always have a cable in the common terminal. Now, for a voltmeter, it's measuring the pressure between two points. So we're always going to have a black lead in the common terminal, which will be connected to the negative rail or the negative terminal, or the most negative point on the circuit. Now, on this one here, we've got three red terminals. The first one is 30 volts, then 15 volts, then 3 volts. 
So if we go into the red terminal at 30 volts, we'll be reading the very top scale, which is 0, 10, 20, and 30. Now I'll, have a, I'll get you to have a think about that, what each one of those little divisions would equal to when you work that out. And I'm going to get you to do the same thing with the next one. So on the 15 volt, we're now, you, need, you now need to look for the number the 15 on the end. And you now look at 0, 5, 10, 15. And finally, we go to the bottom one, which is 3 volts, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Now when you get those different scales, make sure you, when you're reading those scales, you can work out what each one of those divisions equal to. Now with a voltmeter, and with the ammeter as we explained, we always go to the highest range first, and we work our way down to the lowest range. That's to make sure that we haven't got too much voltage or pressure, and we blow the meters up.